Morning, everyone. I'm Ben Anthony. I'm the business CEO of uh, Others Gold. And uh, very pleased to uh, show you the black and water mine and process utility running at full thing ahead. Um, uh, Mike and I are currently standing on top of the second big duck here right now. Um, and if you look to my right, you can see up to the open pit area where I'll be talking to Andrew after I finish showing you the rest of the plant. But, um, and we've got the truck camp there in the foreground, not too many people in that anymore, and the primary crushing area here to the back of me. Um, I'd like to tell you around the plant, so follow me. So hopefully you can hear me well here, but we're standing on top of the secondary screens, um, looking down towards the tertiary, two tertiary crushes and screens below us, and the screening station right at the end of the picture there. Panning left, we've got the uh, core source stockpile taking a 10 or so millimetre product to, uh, to the ball mill through a live reclaimed tunnel. Um, we're currently crushing it around, oh, let's just say it's uh, somewhere between 800 and 1,000 tonnes an hour. I'll show you on the belt. This cross rock here coming into the secondary crusher at about about 125 millimetre product. Um, if it doesn't sound too noisy to you in the background, it's because the circuit's pretty quiet, actually. I think in being consistent with what our mission has been all along, um, the uh, the dry circuit in the front in general is performing and behaving pretty well. Um, if you look to my left just here, we've got our what we call our livestock pile which um, we've got about 70,000 tonnes in there right now of crushed product. What that does is it provides just a little bit of buffer for us when we get patches such as cold snaps. We had um, a February cold snap about 10 or so days ago where we had a period uh, below minus 30 for a few days. But um, if you haven't noticed already, I'm just wearing a shirt today and um, it's above zero as I'm talking to you right now. So uh, pretty nice weather. We should. Um, open a resort here. It's a good place for holiday. Follow me down and we'll uh, move back down. We'll go back in down past the second cluster. And um, and then I'll show you, uh, I'll hand it back to Andrew over hold up quick. Follow me. Just passing the secondary screening station here. And standing right on top and looking at the secondary cluster. Um, one thing I wanted to point out while we're here is if you can see the pit in the foreground or the background there with the, uh, the small plane just sitting there for distance, I think that demonstrates the uh, downhill load and all uh, opportunity the Blackwater clearly had with the pit being so close. With the elevation being higher than uh, the wrong area here, which allows it to uh, to benefit from the uh, reduced load and all the stuff that we have got a tertiary finish right here on this area here. Uh, we we'll go down to the second structure here. And this is one down three crushes. I've got one crush here, and our three crushes are just here. And as I said, we are, we are currently crushing the top hole there at just under a thousand an hour. Um, I look forward to the tutorial here from the mill building. I'll uh, hand back to uh, Andrew over, hold up the pit, and I'll see you still. Behind me here, we got the 6040 400 ton machine uh, digging in our 1610 bench. Um, for those that have been to site on a site tour previously, just to give you a kind of orient you with where we're standing right over here, we've got our production drill rigs and just off to the left, you can see a blasted uh, muck pile. About three meters above that is where we used to take our uh, tour visitors for uh, a view of the, of the whole asset. Um, and so 
as we said back then, you were standing, you know, very shallow overburden right on top of our high grade ore. And now you can kind of see full circle. We've, uh, we've exposed that ore, drilling and blasting it and, and supplying it down to the uh, primary crusher as, uh, as Jeremy just indicated. Um, some more notes on our, our pit development uh, work so far to date. We, we started this uh, EX3401 uh, 6040 in, in about September, cutting in haul roads, uh, doing some early pit pioneering work, um, but really uh, mining in earnest uh, as of the start of this year. And um, I guess, uh, Klaus, if you can just pan across this way, uh, you can really see we've knocked back the 1630 meter bench We've knocked back the 16, 20 meter bench and uh, we've pushed back the 16, 10 here. And we're just finishing off uh, this 16, 10 meter bench waste uh, behind us here uh, right now. And in the floor uh, beneath the 793 haul truck that you see getting loaded is, uh, is a substantial amount of high grade ore um, inventory for us to support uh, the ongoing ramp up of crushing and milling operations. Um, in terms of uh, in terms of things we've experienced during the the pit development program, um, one of the things we've talked about previously is the the bedrock contact surface. Generally speaking, it's been accurate in its overall shape, but we uh, we certainly confirmed some uh, indicative results from the grade control program in that the the surface is overall higher, um, basically everywhere, which uh, you know gives us gives us more ore overall, which is a, a nice uh, a nice kick. Um, in terms of water, you can see behind me here today, uh, a, a beautiful day uh, up here in the pit. We've not seen many dry holes through the production or, uh, or sorry, we've not seen many wet holes through the production or grade control program, but we have put in place a number of measures to make sure that we manage water up here in the pit. So up along the, uh, up along the tree line, you can see behind me, We've put in a, an interim diversion uh, system to make sure this coming freshet, we, we make sure any water, surface water coming off the mountainside is diverted around the pit and protects this, uh, this pit wall, which is our phase one pit wall from any, uh, any environmental inflows. Down the hill, um, down the hill behind me, we've also got our pit water sump, which collects all of the, all of the pit water um, that sheds directly onto the pit. Um, so we've got a, a good set of controls in place for this coming spring. In terms of equipment performance, uh, Jeremy mentioned it uh, there on the call, but downhill loaded, we're, we're really starting to see the benefit of downhill loaded. In fact, we're seeing burn rates kind of on the low end of, uh, of expectations uh, during, during our planning process. Um, in terms of equip equipment productivities, we've confirmed some of our key budget assumptions around payload for the 793s. Last month, we hit our average in the 240, 245 ton range for all the haul truck cycles, which is which is bang on target. And that's a key uh, input to overall fleet productivity. The 6040 behind me, we've seen periods of you know 3,000 tons per, per operating hour, which is which is on target. And um, so it's really been a good, a good um, kickstart in January to mining operations, confirming some of these key planning assumptions. Um, in terms of uh, equipment personnel and the crews, I think we mentioned on a previous on previous tours, we we self performed a lot of the earthworks on site, and we self performed all the mine development activity with a view to bringing on board uh, a lot of our equipment operators from the earthworks side over into mining through a progressive upskilling and training. On this machine today, um, we've got one of our expert uh, mine trainers that we've brought on board, helping us with training some of the, some of the operators that we brought over from the earthworks team. And uh, that person's been working with, uh, with our operators on pit setups and, and continuous improvement initiatives. Um, yeah, and then in terms of uh, in terms of the rest of the mine development activities up here, our plan is to continue driving back the the 1610 bench and exposing our 1600 bench below me um, to continue to supply the the mill as it as it ramps up. 
I think that's uh, I think that's everything I wanted to cover off up here. But I'll pass it back over to uh, to Jeremy and and Mike if they're if they're ready to go. Yeah, I'm standing at the uh, near the head of um, the main mill feed conveyor. You can see the uh, also stock pile just getting uh, some new feed material this morning. Um, like I said before, seventy thousand tons roughly stockpiled in the plant at about a product of around ten millimeters P80. Um, our high voltage 230 kV green BC hydro power station over in the backdrop there and three, some three maintenance sheds here. I really want to show you inside the mill building because uh, that's what it's all about, really. Follow me. So we've got a uh, 14 megawatt Metso dual drive, variable uh, speed drive wall mill, um, which sounds, even I think with your backdrop from where you are, pretty quiet. Um, doing it pretty easy and running very, very well. If uh, Mike, you can hand on the mill feed conveyor there. You can see we've got um, north 650 tons an hour going through now. Um, and uh, yeah, we've got the gravity circuit over in the back top. What's really nice to show about this area of the building is a cyclone cluster here. Um, and again, being consistent with what MS been all the way through the gill. We've only got uh, three cyclones, I think, running at the moment. Uh, here in the and the wet, wet plant. But the regen kiln down over to my right, and straight in front of us, we've got the, uh, the two concentrators and the gravity circuit and the uh, intensive rich reactor on the ground floor. If you want to follow me up towards the stairway of the CIL, we'll be moving past the elution column, acid wash column, and below us is the uh, strip solution heater. If you recall, all of our uh, all our equipment in here is so deep and wide, um, generating big in the plant at all. Everything's benefiting from the uh, low cost power we're getting to be fixing on the green power. We'll go up to towards the uh, top of the CIL now. Follow me up. As I walk up these stairs here, you'll see the cyclone cluster to my right. Um, we'll turn back around towards the four wheels, hill feed conveyor, and towards our carbon. Take your experience just up here because we're pulling uh, the carbon from the CIL circuit right now. Nice little can here, Mike, just around here trying. As I mentioned before, we've only got three of these cyclones running right now. So there's a lot more capacity in the plant. Um, and the mill feed conveyor and the middle doing it very easy. If you'd like to follow me out here towards the CIL. We skip the load of carbon. Uh, we just wash before we go in to start um, the elution process with the ADR circuit. Okay. Big corner out here. So uh, um, out here we've got a conventional carbon and leach um, CIL train with um, three tanks we're using, like as a pre-leach, um, then six leach tanks and two detox tanks um, with uh, oxygen addition. And if you'd like to follow me this way, you may see a little bit of scaffold and stuff still around the place. Typical for this. Um, this time of finishing commissioning off, we're putting things like lights up, um, some of the peripheral uh, insulation, which we didn't need to uh, to get the uh, gold pores away, uh, putting that in, and just some little uh, bits and pieces that, uh, that are from the punch list items that are still outstanding. So follow me over this way towards the uh, the tree leaves tanks. Um, for those of you with a metallurgical background, you can see that we're getting really, really nice oxygen addition 
and um, a really nice chemical reaction in the tanks. And uh, the leach efficiency has been quite good to date. As we move across towards the outboard side of the process for the carbon leach train, you can see that we have behind Mike is two, two trains of uh, three tanks, obviously. Three free leach tanks to which we are standing on top, and we're going to, uh, and two detox tanks down the, the back end of the uh, facility. If we just move across here, Mike, towards uh, this side of the CIO train, What you'll see behind me now, obviously, is back to the crushing facility. One of my favourite vantage points in the plant, actually, here, because we've got all our eggs in one basket right here. Um, we've got the crushing facility, or the dry plant, if you like, pan across to the left. The pit, you can nearly touch it, pretty much. Um, construction camp will be ready for an expansion when we decide to do that. And what's really nice when I look around down this outboard flank and all this clear polygon just to the back of the CIL train here is if you look at our corporate deck, you see the stage two footprint. Well, guess what? It's largely clear. So uh, uh, we'll be ready to roll when uh, Stephen gives me the nod. Um, back over here, spine, Mike, here is uh, the security building. We've got our bone and scrapped out over here, our metal metas, metas water treatment plant just uh, in the foreground. And what you can see in the backdrop over there is the uh, operational camp, which is that um, it's completed and uh, we've currently got about, we're about 75% occupancy down there. So uh, still got a few spare beds and um, beautiful day here at Blackwater. <laughs>